Welcome to worship at Hadwin Park Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. Can you believe it? The baby was born. In our church, we will experience Christmas liturgically for a few more days, and then we begin the season of epiphany, the season of lights. We will get to meet the wise persons. After our Christmas season of the luminous darkness, there is a blessing in the fact that this season of light in the church is a season of much darkness in our world. I mean the luminary darkness. There's a lack of light, and that's a good time to talk about light. It is good darkness. If that makes no sense to you, go back and listen to the sermons of our ad, ser, sermons in our Advent Christmas season. Pastor Sarah, Brett, and myself wondered before the Advent season, how are we going to bring worship to you all for Advent and Christmas season while quarantined? I got to tell you, I've never been so proud of this church. Thank you to all who volunteered to read, to speak, to tithe, to count, to shovel, to put up signs, to give extra help to those who lost jobs, to all who learned how to hold a phone horizontal, horizontally so that our videos might stream better, to all of you who learned more technology than you cared to know. We're so much smarter now. I think of all of you, Betty Jane, Joan Fairbex, Joan Fairbex Banks, Trish McAllister, Jane Moyer, we all hit this learning curve, very nervous, but we did it at breakneck speed, never missed a service from the day we closed down. And we are looking at a new future where we can incorporate all this learning into our evangelism, worship, and meetings post-COVID. Thank you. I sat down the other day to start a list starting from the first service of all the people who participated, well, it was very, 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 very long, and I lost it. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you know, and thank you for your participation in virtual worship services at Hadwin Park Church 2020. Next month, I'm going to be on vacation. Glenn and I are moving to our new home at 73 Hillside Village Drive. If you can't remember it, go to Realm. You can look us up. Our new address is there. And if you want to learn Realm for next 2021, talk to Sarah, Pastor Sarah, and she will help you learn how to find it and to use it. Pastor Sarah, Pastor Sarah HPC at Gmail. During my vacation, you're in good, good, good hands. Ed will be creating your YouTube worship services. You know, sometimes I watch it and say, I wasn't that good. Ed made us all shine. And I know he will continue. Pastor Sarah, Al Green, Reverend Sam, and Reverend Paul Ricard will be preaching and leading worship. Cindy Young will be doing the bulletins, and Sarah will be sending you the Saturday informational bullet, um, email. I'll see you in February, particularly at our annual meeting, which will be virtual and will be February 14th. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, and 2021 will be a year where the world is changed towards justice love, and compassion. Merry Christmas, and see you next year. Hello, Merry Christmas. My name is Victor Alfred Chaze. I am excited to be a member of the Hydroin Park Congregational Church, and I will be reading you the welcoming statement. Here the welcoming statement of Hadwin Park Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, as we prepare for worship. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, we seek to find a place for you here at 6 Clover Street, Worcester, Massachusetts, United States of America, Planet Earth, and also virtually. We hope you find peace and uplift in our worship. Welcome to all who have no church home, to all who need strength, to all who want to follow Christ, to those who, with doubts, or those who do not believe at all. Welcome to new visitors and old friends. Welcome to, you, to all who have been wounded or unwelcomed at any church anywhere, anytime. 
Welcome to all immigrants and refugees. In the name of Jesus Christ who was born in the town of Bethlehem, where his athlete parents were strangers. Welcome to grandparents, mothers, fathers, and single and partnered people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, sexual orientations, and gender identities, to young and old, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. Let us prepare to worship. Sunday of 2020, we're welcoming eight new members to Hadwin Park Congregational Church. Please find their pictures in the bulletin and a contact piece of information for them and welcome them in your own way. They are Maddie and Aaron Hernandez, Tyler Heron, Arlene Quipilla, Victor Kayazi, Henry Mukalazi, Jared Sims, and Akeem Williams. Please join me now in the reception of new members. It is printed in your bulletin. To you new members, by your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ the Church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home, and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Now to all, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess our faith in the triune God. Will both old and new members respond as printed in the bulletin? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? In private conversations and at Zoom meetings, each person was asked if they wished to be a member at Hadwin Park Church, and they replied in the affirmative. 
When we're able to be together again, they will stand before you so that you know them better. For now, as I said, take a look at their pictures. They have all acknowledged full rights and privileges and full responsibility of time, talent, and financial support. To you new members, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equal citizens with the saints and members of this household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus alone being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Let us, the members of Hadwin Park Congregational Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. So to you new members, they're going to be promising this covenant with you that's printed in the bulletin from their houses and wherever they are. I will read it, and you will hear it, and I will be reading it on behalf of the congregation. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Amen. Hello, I'm Erin Paget Hernandez, um, and I am excited to become a new active member of Hadwin Park Church. Um, I actually grew up here at Hadwin Park. I spent my early childhood um, being very involved with the Baptist church with my family until my parents, Don and Pat Paget, um, decided to bring us to Hadwin Park when I was a teenager. Um, my paternal grandmother, Ruth Nam, attended church at Hadwin Park for years um, and we actually joined to be um, with her back when Reverend Femby was the pastor. Um, and then I remember being baptized as a teenager at Hadwin Park and getting my confirmation here at HPC. Um, I enjoyed teaching Sunday school and being an acolyte and um, volunteering for vacation Bible school and even working in the nursery. Um, I eventually stopped going to church when I was um, in college. And then after graduate school, I moved actually to Mexico to teach English as a second language. Um, that experience changed my life completely. Um, it opened my eyes to a whole new culture. And I actually met my husband and married him there in Mexico. Um, we returned to the United States and had a baby, Maddie, and Maddie is in this year's confirmation class. She's 16. Um, so I remember coming back to church at Hadwin Park um, after my grandmother, Ruth, passed away um, and then attending her funeral at Hadwin Park Church. When my two maternal great aunts, um, Joyce and Barbara Berg, uh, went to my grandmother's funeral. Um, they actually fell in love with Hadwin Park and joined, and they started attending church regularly. Um, Joyce and Barbara also used to babysit for Maddie a lot, and they would often tell us funny stories about um, the BS club, the Bible study club and the old lady club, they called it, um, from church. So when Maddie turned, I think about two, um, Checo, my husband, and I decided to, that we should start bringing Maddie to church. She really loved it. Um, we met Pastor Judy, um, who was the new pastor at the time, and we enjoyed coming. Maddie loved singing um, in front of the church with everyone. Um, and then we had our second child, Santi. Um, we started coming to church actually less often than Santi had a tendency of throwing up <laughs> at church um, in the nursery. So it was hard to leave him there. And then kind of soccer overtook our lives on Sunday um, mornings. So unfortunately, years went by before we came back to Hadwin Park. It was actually Maddie 
who I think at the age of about 15 wanted to return to church in Joyce and Barbara Berg's memory. She wanted to receive her confirmation and become involved with all of the great social justice work being done at the church. Um, returning to church with Maddie last year before the pandemic was definitely the best decision that I've made. I feel at home at Hadwin Park. I love how inclusive it is and how caring the people that I've met um, at the church are. I'm amazed at the transformation um, and the progress that has happened just over the few short years at HPC, such as the task force um, work. I'm really hoping to become more involved um, at Hadwin Park again. Um, and I can't wait to return in person, hopefully very soon, um, and become an active member again at Hadwin Park, along with Maddie and hopefully in the future, Santi and Checo. Okay, it was nice to see you and I look forward to seeing you guys in person, hopefully soon. Bye.
Would you please join me for the prayer of confession? It is found printed in your bulletin. Like King Herod before us, we hunt down that which threatens our lives and we want to kill. When we feel tricked by those who outsmart us, we fly into a rage and want to destroy that which threatens us. Forgive us, O oh God. Give us sight and insight to set aside our fragile egos and to flee into your loving and protective arms. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to whom we now silently confess. A reading from the second chapter of Luke. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you're dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer right and night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who are looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ for the Christmas people. Amen. Before I was a pastor, all of my friends were very active in church, 
And so eight of us couples, 16 people, decided that we were not going to have our personal Christmas party during December. We all got involved and did food baskets and carol singing and went to every service, candle lighting, the, everything that was at church, we were there. And we were so relaxed knowing that we wouldn't have to put together this party until January. We even went to Mechanics Hall and watched and listened to Handel's Messiah. We left our decorations up a bit longer and um, the party was going to be at my house. So when Christmas was over, I decided to clean the house the day of the party. As I cleaned, the tree limbs seemed a bit limp, even on my artificial tree. Much of the tinsel was on the floor due to the happy unwrapping on Christmas morning. Under the tree, it was bare. Gaily wrapped packages were now sweaters and toys that the kids were fighting over. I turned on the stereo. Yes, it was a stereo then. And I wanted to hear Christmas music to get in the spirit. But Silent Night sounded like a dirge. Holly Jolly Christmas seemed frivolous, even irritating. My girls were misbehaving on Christmas uh, school vacation. They didn't have to watch out. They could pout. They could shout. Santa had already come. Finally, kids to bed and friends begin arriving in Christmas sweaters that may have beautif been beautiful a week ago, but had become truly ugly, inappropriate sweaters. We shared glug and stories. No matter what we did, it was just not the same. Christmas was over. The angels were resting after their busy proclaiming. Jesus maybe was a colicky baby and the star had moved along. The days were dark, and our spirits had not been trained to see its luminous beauty. Christmas was over, Jesus had arrived, dinner had been scrumptious, but the leftovers were dry, and the gravy was gone. Maybe that is the very reason that Howard Thurman tells us that now the work, the work of Christmas begins. In our gospel lesson today, Mary and Joseph were bringing Jesus to the, be blessed at the temple in the Hebrew tradition. And I started thinking of it. I wonder if he cried when they got him ready for this holy trip, and I wonder what he wore. Maybe his aunties took the swaddling clothes and made a pretty little gown for him. They had to travel. This wasn't going up the church to the street, up the street to the church. This was, they had to go to the holy city of Jerusalem. And remember that Mary was a teenager. And she was participating in her first go at parenting. Do any of you remember bringing your child for baptism? Sometimes, do you remember the wonder and meaning of it all was lost in the fact that the baby cried the entire service or that the baby's digestive system had emptied into a diaper that could not contain its contents. I remember somebody coming into church with a baby and Bob running over to hug the baby. I thought it was such a sweet moment, but the mom was all worried. Who's this man and what are we doing? And I've got to get up to the front seat to get their baby baptized. I think it might have been like that for Usher Simeon in the Bible story. He was old, but he had been told something. The Holy Spirit had whispered to him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And every day, rain or shine, he lived an expectant life, even in January. We are not sure how he knew, but he knew. And he went to Mary and Joseph as they came into the temple, and he took the baby in his arms and he praised God for a miracle. He said, I can die now. I've seen the future, and I've seen hope. An 84-year-old widow was part of the story, too. She also recognized Jesus as the Messiah. She began to tell everybody, if you want redemption, if you want to find salvation, it's right here. What does surprise me about this text is that all of this surprised Mary and Joseph. Really? Had they already forgotten the starry night 
the kind innkeeper, the sound of the animals as she delivered her firstborn and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn? Had they already forgotten that these poor and lowly shepherds appeared out of the blue, praising God and telling a story of angels falling out of the sky, yet begging them not to fear? Had they already forgotten that the angels had said the birth of her child was good news to all people? Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. I guess we shouldn't be surprised about Mary and Joseph. We do know she pondered all these things as they happened to her. But I think maybe the pondering gave way to laundry, to feeding, to worry, and even shame when she went to the well to gather water. Sort of like us, hmm? And maybe there's a lesson about learning from the old people. That is, it is in the waiting and the living and the learning and the growing and the seeking that we can really understand better God's work. Wendell Berry is a poet, an author, and a Kentucky farmer. He is in his late 80s, and he writes, My purpose here is only to notice that the ideal of a whole or completed life now appears to be replaced by the ideal of a merely long life. What is or what could be the goal of our life and work? This is a fearful question and should be fearfully answered. Your purpose and your goal is with you all the time. The ancient norm or ideal seems to have been a life in which you perceive your calling, faithfully follow it, and did your work with satisfaction, associated generously with neighbors, grew old seeing yourself replaced by your children or your neighbor's children, but continued to old age and attempted to be useful, and then finally to die a good and holy death. Like Simeon, Barry thinks that we have lost that sense of completeness in our obsession with more of everything, including life expectancy. We have come to believe that there is an infinite, inexhaustible supply of everything, including life and we are entitled to it. For most of us, it is how we look at our lives. And maybe that is why, when the commercialism of Christmas, the sights, the colors, the carols are gone, that we don't feel like doing the work of Christmas. I hope that it is in this season that we come to wisdom. Don't wait until you're old to know. We need a purpose, and we need that purpose in the name of Jesus, in the name of the holy child we have worshipped, and we still worship. This season, we have heard much, much from our babes telling us good news. I remember the Christmas play, and um, oh, I can't remember, Caesar, go back and watch it. That kid knew what this was all about. Go watch it. And we need to hear the words over and over again of Simeon. We are fulfilled when we have done the work of Christmas as we engage in this new kingdom of God. We need to listen to our elders in the church to hear about what is left after the tree is taken down. Or better yet, after the tree gets out of the way. Now that Christmas is over, it is time to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share it with our world, and to purpose ourselves in the work of God's kingdom. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Please join me in the pastoral prayer. O Holy One, heavenly angels spoke to earthly shepherds, and eternity entered time in the child of Bethlehem. Through the telling of the Christmas story, let our temporal lives be caught up in the eternal in that same child. 
that we might join shepherds and all the heavenly host in praising the coming of Jesus Christ. Nurturing God, open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. O God, from our mother's womb you have known us. You call us to follow you through all our days and seek us whenever we wander. As we advance in years, which we all do every day, clothe us with your love that we may grow in grace and find favor in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, I'm Dori Hutchins, and I'm grateful for Hadwin Park Church because it has given me a whole new family. Black and white, young and old, men and women, and a grandchild. Hi, my name is Tyler Heron, and this is my cat, Ollie, and I'm part of the 2020 Confirmation class, and I'm grateful for Heaven Park because of all the people in it who make it such a special, happy, and such a good place to want to be. Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Chaze, and I'm thankful to Hadwin Park Church because Hadwin Park Church has been a home away from home from home for me. Um, Hadwin Park has lovely people that are welcoming, um, that make you feel at home, and um, that renew your strength and faith in God with each and every day. We wait upon you now for our morning offering.
Hi, my name is Cindy Young, and I'm going to read a poem called In Memoriam by Alfred Lord Tennyson, the most popular British poet of the Victorian age. As you listen, remember it was written in 1850, so the language is not inclusive. Look past that and reflect on how this 170-year-old poem could have been written for today. Ring out, wild bells, to the wild sky, the flying cl cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out, wild bells, and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring, happy bells, across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind for those that here we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life, the sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right. Ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease, Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free, the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. and serve God in all that you do. In God's strength, comfort, be afflicted, stand with those who weep, and defend the oppressed. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and always, and unto ages of ages. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.